Welcome back guys, this is Shrika. Today we are going to understand one of the tricky question in SQL Server, uh, right? When we do a real-time programming, we need it to know, right? This is quite uh, difficult for the beginner, but this is quite easy for the experienced one or the people who do want to uh, learn something new in SQL Server or they do want to try something different, right? So today's session is totally dedicated to the one of the live programming which I will share with you and this is totally a live demonstration how to deal with that. Okay, so today's topic is basically it's like an interview question. The question is can I pass a table to the SQL Server procedure? Yeah, you are right. This is the question. Okay, I'm repeating the question again. Can I pass table to the procedure as an input? right so if you are a fresher you might be thinking really or if you are experienced then this is quite possible you haven't used it but don't worry that's that's fine right so today's topic is can i pass the table to the sql server procedure this is our today's topic i'm writing for understood can i pass This is basically an interview question. Recently, one of my friend attended this uh, interview in database programming. He uh, got this question, so he asked me this question, and, and so I'm going to create a video on this. Let's try to understand. Can I pass what? Can I pass table? Right? Okay. Can I pass table to the SQL Server procedure? The answer of this question is yes. Then you may have a second question. How? Okay. So, uh, so, so, so basically, let's try to understand the procedure structure first. So, how do we create a procedure? We create a procedure by writing create procedure. Then we need to give the name for that procedure. Then we do need to pass the parameters, right? Input parameters like uh, at the rate pair one. Then you create a type. Right. Likewise, you can give a lot of that. So this is basically the structure of the procedure. Now the next thing which can come into your mind by looking at this parameter structure, how do I pass the table to this? Right. So if I want to pass table to this store procedure, then what I need to do? I need to uh, give some name to the procedure. Let's say I'm giving uh, call. Table. This is my proc, right? Then the parameter I'm giving it as the I1. I the data type. This is the big question. Which data I should give if I want to pass the table, right? Okay. So I have a table as a keyword, right? But I don't have a table as a data type. So what does it mean? Right, so I know if I want to pass the integer value, I should give as in. If I want to pass the character value, I should give where. Likewise, likewise I can give. If I want to say I want to store the money value, so I can give it as a money. Fine, but the question is here. How can I give the table data type? SQL Server doesn't have the specific data type for the same. Right, we have a keyword called as a table, but which is not a data type. So it means what we need to create, what we need to create a such data type or user defined data type which can accept what which can accept table. So here we need to create a data type which support table. Right. So which kind of data type we do need to create? Right. So if you will come to the your respect to database uh, I'm creating a new database for this live demonstration so my database name is so it would be the fresh so you guys can get a lot of ideas my database name is learn types 
so this is database so just write database what happened let's see new data type base which uh, name as learn types would be created then we need to go into that database so you write use learn types so by writing this use keyword i will be reaching to the respective data here you can see great now let's come back here and let's see the database now so you need to come here you need to refresh all databases then we can come down and you can see the new database which we just have been created so our database name is what learn types right this is our database so we'll expand this database and we'll come into this here we need to go to the programmability section just press on that then we have a section called as a types click on that in the types you will see five things the first is system data types means the, the system which already have been provided to us then user defined these three sections are user defined right in the user defined section you can see uh, user defined table types user defined data types and user defined types so if you are creating a custom type it will move to the respective section and if you are creating a data type which will support the table we need to go come and we need to see here and if you are creating some normal like integer money custom data type so it will come to this section great now if i'll come and if i like click on the system data type and if i'll expand it i can see here a few uh, types here so basically these are the exact number of the uh, data type which we have in the sql server which are provided by default so if you click one by one you will see all let's say exact numbers you will see like this if you want to check all the data which will belongs to data and time you can come and you can see if you want to see the character you can come down here and see like why is you, you want to see the CLR so these are basically system defined data type likewise what we are going to do we are going to create a new data type which will support table and this data type is not present in the SQL server which is not given by default so we are going to create a new data type which will support table so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a type. Okay, let let's say let's make it more simple. So you need to come here, you need to just right click on that, and then you need to create a new user table defined. Let's try to understand the structures. I'm trying to make it as simple as okay. So this is a syntax which we have for this you can also create primary fine let's try to understand the syntax first so you need to use a word keyword like create then type then you need to specify the name for that then you need to mention it as a table so the type which will be created will be as a table likewise the normal structure is a table so you need to give it as the column name then data type this is the normal data type, system data type, right? So column name, data type, column name, data type, fine. So this is basically the syntax. Let's copy the syntax and let's formulate it within the our format. So what will we do? We are going to create a new data type and we are naming it as I'm naming it as UT table. So this is my custom user defined data type or table uh, data type right this is just a definition inside that's what i'm going to do i'm going to add two column the first column is id which support value in and second column is a value which support the var cap of 200 industry that's fine for me great so if you'll come and if you'll understand it is showing me error why it is showing me error? because uh, we, sh we should not use the address while creating this. Okay. So this is a new user defined data type or table data type which will look like the table. For example, if you want to create, if it is getting complicated, let's try to understand. If you want to create a table, so how would you do that? You just need to simply replace this like this and you need to remove that. 
so if you will just do this syntax the table would be created just for the understanding purpose but now we are going to create a table data type so you need to follow the syntax which is provided by the microsoft Sigma server and uh, let's create this data type okay fine the moment you will click on this execute you will see the new data type would be created and where you can find it you just need to go to the again back to the type section because here if you just observe user defined define table type nothing is there right so you just need to come here you need to refresh it on and you need to come down and see this new data type would be created here and it will be automatically reflected there and if you we'll expand it you will find it here there are two column id and the value which are automatically created for that then keys we have not added anything like that's why there is nothing so you won't find anything wrong. so the main important thing is the we just have created a user defined data type and which is a table right which support table great now what are we are going to do you know this is the procedure which we have already talked just simply uh, replace this let's say if i want to make it as in so instead of making it in make it as a user defined table data type ut table right then you need to use a work keywords okay let's try okay fine great then just write the definition for this as i know this i support table so i just need to write select start from so basic idea for this is i will pass a table to the procedure and it will show me the output this is what i am expecting now let's let's create it let's see what happens so it's showing me the incorrect syntax if you are getting error it's very good you should get an error and let's free let's run the code and let's fix it now again you will see an error let's try to read it i'll let's suggest you should always get an error because error makes you a perfect coder so the let's try to understand and let's play with the error the table value parameter at that must be declared with the option read all so it has a syntax like you should always define the table uh, value due function va variable as a read only so just uh, add it on and just run the code now you will see our all issues are fixed and i can see this command executed successfully and let's try to understand uh, the structure for this row procedure just press alt f4 i can see this procedure has been created uh, so the parameter name is at the rate i and the data type for this is ut table fine now what i am going to do i am going to call this procedure so if i want to call this procedure what i need to do i simply need to take this name and take the parameter right and need to pass the table here okay so how do i do that so for that what you need to do you just need to create declare again one more table right okay right. okay now we have declared at the red i then what are we going to do we are going to insert some data into the table as i know there are first type is integer then second is i am giving it as a shrikan then union russian uh, third person i am adding here as rohit Okay. Um, okay. Fine. Just add it and run it. Right. Now let's see. This is basically the script, right? Because uh, the scope of that the red eye is limited to the execution only. So we need to call everything in the scope. Let's run this script and let's try to understand. I can see this SP has written me what? This SP has written me three rows. And if you'll observe it carefully, I'm just passing what I'm just passing a variable, and that variable is storing the table value. 
so okay guys just try to understand what we did we simply pass a variable to the store procedure but that variable store a table itself that store table might be the big one not a problem so where can i use it when i do work with the real time programming sometimes i need to pass i need to have a parent sp or parent code there i would have a table and that table data need to be passed to the another child table right and we might have option like uh, we can create a temporary table in parent sp and then we can access that parent uh, parent temporary table into the child table but the problem is the number of loopings the nested call more than nested call get happen you might see the error like uh, axc can't do a nested operation so you get uh, an error if you'll pass more than the few sps right so finding such situations we should have this kind of logic right so in that what will we do we will adjust simply add one uh, variable and we'll take that uh, data from the parent code and we simply pass the out uh, data to the child one and we'll take it as an output as a result of the sp right so this is really helpful i guess you understood the problem right so can i pass table to the sql server procedure the answer is yes and i explained all the steps and i hope you guys uh, don't have anything uh, doubt about this if you guys have any doubt related with this video or if you want to improve something from this video please let me know i will try to do improvement in the next coming video and i will try to uh, explain a lot so thanks for watching and have a great day